In this video, you will learn how to use throttle limit on your radio to become a better racing pilot and progress faster. Now, throttle limit in general is old news, but I'm going to show you the way how to set it up so it's very convenient to use in the field. But more importantly, I'm going to show you what throttle limit actually does to your flying and how it helps you to learn racing. And let's start with that. So my FPV career began like two years ago, but I never really looked into racing until recently. So I built myself two 6S quads and joined the local racing group. And I quickly realized there is a problem with my quads. They are too fast for me. What I mean by that is I don't have time to react when I fly to the next gate. I'm not talking like drawing pro proper lines on the track. I'm just always scared and fighting the quad, jumping everywhere. Let's take a look at the DVR so I can illustrate my point better. Okay, so here you can see what I mean by quad being too fast. I really struggle to keep my lines close to the objects or obstacles. Sometimes I even struggle to hit the gates and right there after a straight line. I fly so much further away than I should. And for this figure, I mean, I should ideally keep my, my quad close to those flags, but I, I can't help it to uh, to just drift to the side because it's it's just gaining speed too fast for my reaction. And right there, look at that huge overshoot. So that's basically the problem I have. And it, it may seem that I'm kind of in control, but I'm actually not. I'm really frightened right there. So yeah. Obviously, I needed to go slower. And one advice I see a lot on the internet is when you start in drone racing, start with low camera angle and slowly work your way up until you're kind of comfortable flying. But I think that's actually a really bad advice. Let me explain why. When you fly at low camera up tilt angle, your quad is also at low up tilt angle naturally. So when you hit the gate in this configuration and you turn around and want to decelerate, well, there is no way for you to do that because if you throttle up, you will just gain altitude. And in order to actually decelerate, you have to pitch down and then apply throttle. But since you're flying with low camera angle, you're not used to that. So you end up doing nothing and you just drift back. And I see that a lot with new pilots. They hit the gate, they turn around and they drift back. Then they hit the next one, turn around, drift back again, losing lots of time. So I think the right way to slow your quad down is actually throttle limit. When I first thought about that, I was a little bit skeptical because in order to keep the quad flying at high up tilt angle, you have to have some throttle to kind of stay afloat, right? Well, it turns out I underestimated how much of that throttle actually goes into acceleration and not staying afloat. Let's compare the DVR. This DVR was taken on two different days, but the track layout is the same. I'm going to pause and synchronize it before every obstacle so we can see the difference. Here on the left, I'm already anticipating how much I have to brake when I reach that flag. But on the right, I'm just more fluid. And as a result, I'm going through this obstacle faster. Here you can see how much faster I am approaching this obstacle. But since I have that speed, I will have to, well, it has to go somewhere and I struggle with that. What's also interesting is when I exit the obstacle, because of the confidence I got when I was going through it, I can actually already accelerate right from the very start, going to the next one. On the right, even though I have throttle limit, I'm actually going much faster through that straight line. Now here on the right again, I have more flow and that builds up confidence. So at the exit, I'm faster again and I can accelerate right away. Again, huge overshoot there and it sets me off so I, I can't really manage it. Now this one is interesting because finally there's a figure that looks almost identical on both sides. And here are both clips unedited so you can see how much of a difference it makes in real time. And as a result of that extra flowiness on the, on the right side, I'm actually like four seconds faster. And if I didn't have that stutter in one of the um, last obstacles, I would have been even faster. So throttle limit actually really helped me gain control and that flowiness in this sense. As you just saw, throttle limit is actually very useful. Now there are multiple ways to configure it on the radio or on the quad. The way I prefer though is using one of the potentiometers of your radio to set throttle limit. And the way I have set it up is my Throttle limit goes from 50% cut, so it's like 50% throttle available at maximum, to zero. That means 100% throttle available. 
This way I can actually set it up very precisely. It's like my endpoint in throttle. And I can do that without taking my goggles off. And I also don't have to go into any menu, save anything. It's very, very fast to adjust. I can do it while like on the standing position, on the starting position on the track. It's really fast. It's really right there when you need it. And it's really easy to adjust. And that's the benefit of the method. Let's dive into the configuration. So you press menu and then page to the mixer page. On the mixer page, you locate the throttle channel. In my case, it's channel three. Then you press and hold enter and choose insert after. There you go to the source, press enter again so it starts blinking, and then you twist the knob you want to have assigned to throttle limit. In my case, it's S1. Then you go to weight and change it to 25. And you go to offset and change it to 75. Then you need to go down to the multiplex and change it to multiply. Then you can hit exit twice. Now again, press and hold enter, choose insert after. Again, source should be your potentiometer. Weight should be again 25. But the offset this time should be minus 25. And you don't have to do anything to the multiplex. Right, so exit, exit. And that's pretty much it. How do we verify it works? Well, you can go to the next page, which is outputs. And then you highlight your throttle channel. And you can see that currently my potentiometer is in the most right position, so full throttle available. And if I move my throttle stick, it goes from 1000 to 2000, so that's correct. If I keep my throttle at the maximum stick position and start twisting my knob counterclockwise to decrease or to introduce throttle limit, you can see that it slowly goes down until it hits 1500. So that's the most well, left position for the potentiometer, which corresponds to 50% throttle. So that's exactly what we want. So that's how you set it up. But in order to actually use it, you will need your goggles and FPV feed from your quad. Let's take a look. Now, there is one prerequisite to using this method, which is having your throttle position displayed on the OSD. It is really helpful for racing anyway, so why not having it? In my case, I have it in the lower left corner, and as you can see, currently it goes from 0 to 100% as I move the stick, and the quad is disar disarmed at the moment, but the throttle position is still updated. So if I want to apply throttle limit, say, of 70%, I go full deflection on the throttle stick, and then I start twisting the potentiometer, and I do it until it hits 70%, and that's it. I don't have to save anything, I don't have to like go into any configuration menu, that's just enough to, to just twist the potentiometer. And as you can see now, throttle goes from 0 to 70%. I still keep the full resolution of the stick, it's just lower at the very end. If I want to change the limit on my throttle for the next heat, again, I go full stick deflection when the quad is disarmed, I adjust my endpoint, and that's it. Again, nothing to save. And also, since I have multiple quads bound to the same model in the radio, I can plug any of my quads and still have the same limit I had the previous heat, which is super convenient. So there you have it. If you're going into drone racing as I am, I absolutely think you should use throttle limit. You will be surprised how much it will help you. Until the next time, cheers. <laughs>